All right, welcome back to the beautiful Pacific Northwest in the land of Platinum Coffee here at Pac West Bigfoots. Your home for the best Pacific Northwest Bigfoot encounter stories. And real quick, um, just want to say thank you so very much for being here. Yes, it is my plan at some point around the middle or end of spring to start uh, going back to more of a weekly format here. I just ended up getting a lot more... Um, uh, content ideas and some of those um, just really cool um, encounters from you guys that I can you know sit here and, and turn into these awesome campfire stories for you guys so I'll be working on those uh, through the rest of this winter and into the beginning of spring so that I can get back to that weekly format so I'm hoping to do that also real quick I know it was yesterday but I'm doing this today so happy Valentine's Day to my beautiful awesome wonderful most patient and gracious wife, Christine. So, <clears throat> I love you, babe. <laughs> I really do. I even love you more than I love Bigfoot. So, all right, let's get on with this week's PacWest Bigfoot encounter story. Young Lovers and the English Point Bigfoot. It was a long time ago, but my girlfriend at the time... And I had a pretty scary run-in with a Bigfoot around and just outside the English Point area of Idaho. Well, to be young again would be great, but I am and have been in love with my wife of 30 years now since that craziest and scariest time in our life. Oh, that girl is my wife today. But here is my, well, our encounter story. The English Point Bigfoot. <clears throat> It was 1974. I was, well, we were young, just about to graduate high school and head off to get some community college in. No, neither of us would head to uh, university. There was no point. We were going to take over the, the family business back in Hayden, and we had a side entrepreneurial venture we were interested in as well, photography. Okay. It was my wife who was interested in photography. I simply love her work in, uh, then and now. She was, and still is to this day, into wedding photography and landscape work. Me? Well, I just follow her around like a, like a little puppy still. Even back then, I was trying to keep up with her. We both loved the outdoors. It is how we met. I'd been hiking around the lake one day when we came across each other. She was there rubbing her ankle with a scowl on her face as if she was more upset with herself than being hurt. <clears throat> Apparently, she had been coming down and around the bend when she slipped and twisted her ankle a bit. It was early spring and there was some snow melt, so things were still a bit wet, muddy, and slick out there. Lucky me, I suppose. But we sat there as I grabbed her canteen she dropped when she took her spill and gave it back to her. We started talking about school, hiking, and the lake itself. Just so you know, <clears throat> she was a, she was homeschooled. I was not. This is why we did not know each other. It may be a smaller town here than the neighboring city, but it is not that small. The next day, she was better, and, and a love for a lifetime started to blossom. I hate to wax all poetic, but all of this led up to the day we'll never forget, one that has left us wondering what these things are. My wife says they are a species of ape. I tend to believe that as well, but until one is caught, who knows? What we do know is that Bigfoot is real, and we know this because one chased us out of the forest near English Point. Well, near the lake, more or less, of old wives' tales. There is a campground called Mockins or Mokins Bay Campground. Some say Mokins, some say Mockins. It is directly across Lake Hayden from English Point, where I am from. We had heard the tales, the stories, that we thought were basically old wives' tales about Sasquatch at the time. And ever since that Bluff Creek film, the talk had increased over the years. But yes, we heard the tales growing up. The local natives to the area never smoke, spoke much about it, however. But I have to say... After what we saw, a good friend of mine, a Native American gentleman in fact, he told me all I needed to know. Basically, he stated that we were very, very lucky to have been what he called escorted out of the woods instead of being mauled and killed. 
Sasquatch around these parts, according to him, are not nice and have been known to take his people back in the day. But up to that point, it was a story to scare little kids around the campfires of English Point and the surrounding area of Lake Hayden. But we saw them. Well, one of them at least. It was the largest, scariest thing I would... I, I, I would not call a monster. Instead, I'd just call it a nightmare. And I know one part of our experience sounds a bit hard to believe and strange, but it happened just like I said. An arm tried to grab her. We had started our hike, or better yet, walk around the Mockins Bay campground uh, that day back in 1974. <clears throat> Trust me when I say there was not as many homes as there are today out there. Not even close. But there were some here and there. But out where we were, there were really none at the time that we knew or could see, at least. It was just us and a very rustic campground. We would hike to the lake and then take the shoreline trail all the way to the top of the lake that day and back again. All the way, we would take pictures with an old Kodak Instamatic my wife owns still to this day. But, funny thing was, as professional as she wanted to become and soon would, she forgot the film in the car. We laugh about that today as we think we could have ended the debate with skeptics of, Bigfoot, of the Bigfoot subject once and for all. But we were off on the hike of our lives, and we did not even know it. It took us a while, even getting started when the sun was coming up. It took us uh, a bit uh, to get over to the north side of the lake. It was when we decided to get some water in us and a snack that my wife noticed she forgot her film. Boy, was she mad at herself. We decided at that point it was still early in the day to take a longer trek back to the car, so... We took a smaller trail that would wind back further into the forest and back around to the back side of the campground. I have to say, it did not take long for me to start thinking it was a very bad decision. First, there was no sound. I mean, no birds, chipmunks, and so on. No sound at all, just a breeze in the trees. Next would come, basically, the scariest moment in our lives. It was a bit hilly, if you will, on that trail. Lots of little bends, switchbacks, and small hills. We got tired pretty quick. The trail was not taken care of, and the melting snow did not help. We decided to take a break, get some more water in us, and take a moment to breathe. Where we sat <clears throat> was on a large fallen tree. In front of us, the trail, and the thick woods beyond. Behind us, well, there was a ton of brush and vines and more trees. We could not see what was right behind us. It was just far too thick. My wife was sitting as I stood up to stretch for a second when I suddenly saw a large, hairy, and monstrous arm slowly inching its way from the thick bushes towards my wife. Yeah. Talk about a scene out of a horror film. It was literally and slowly moving towards her left arm as it was going, as if it was just going to grab her. I thought to myself. I jumped forward and grabbed her by the hand and picked up our backpacks quickly. I told her to walk slowly, don't say a word, until I said so. The Zigzag Man. I told her, as we walked, why it was so quiet in the forest that day. There was a hairy something or other that was literally reaching out slowly towards her from the bushes. Her face went pale with that news as we trudged along. Fortunately, when I grabbed her and the packs, I headed deeper down the trail, not thinking about it. I just wanted to get out of there. I stopped for a second at the thought of turning around, but at that moment I watched as something massive, dark, and extremely tall crossed from one side of the trail to the other in one large stride. My wife almost fainted as she had seen it too. We started moving quicker at that point. But we had a long way to go, I knew, and no weapon on us whatsoever. Every few seconds or so, I would look behind us and could see that thing zigzagging back and forth across the trail following us. I don't think... No. I know I've never been that afraid in my life, ever. At, the mo at that moment, 
We were still moving rather quickly, so I could not make out exactly what it was, or maybe who it was that was following us. I knew it was not a bear, as it looked uh, as though it was on two legs, not four. But in my head, I was not sure it was a person or a human being altogether either. It was far too big, too fast, and far too hairy for a person. It would be a few minutes, but soon enough, we'd know what we were up against. My future wife was being hunted. Suddenly, <clears throat> from the deep recesses of the forest came a scream. I'd never heard in all my years around the lake. And one, I have to say, I heard years later, just one more time. Maybe I was not paying attention, but up to that moment, I really never heard such a loud, ear-piercing, and bone-shaking scream in my life. My wife tumbled to the ground at the sound of the scream. Then, as I turned around to tend to her, I heard something come crashing out of the trees and brush behind us up the trail. That is when we knew what it was. A Bigfoot. A really large and frightening-looking Bigfoot. Its face was dark, as dark as the hair that covered its body, well, all but around the eyes and the mouth. But the cheeks and upper forehead and its body were covered with a long black hair. Looking back today, I remember there possibly being some gray streaks on the head, but I would not bet on that memory if I had to. But the face and the rest of the body I, could, I can see in my mind as if it was yesterday. I had never been afraid like that in my life, and when I finally realized what was really going on, I have to say I was really worried at that moment. I was star It was staring past me and at my wife, and menacingly at that. It had this look of, well, I don't know, but it wasn't good. That was for sure. It was heaving as it breathed, and the breasts were raspy, deep, and frightening as well. Its arms were long, but it was the hands that got my attention. These things were huge, and we were close enough to see long, crazy nails that looked like they could shred us up and st in a part in seconds. Its mouth was a slit of a thing. And the legs were much like any, like, like many folks who have seen these things described, shorter than what it seems they should be. And the brow line was thick as anything I'd ever seen. It sort of hid the eyes to me. But, seconds later, it made a scowl all of a sudden that bore the largest teeth I'd ever seen. The next thing we knew, this thing leaned forward and beat the ground so hard we could feel it with its hands. It was time to go. Slowly I backed up, never once taking my eyes off this thing. I tapped my wife with my foot behind me and told her to get up and stay right behind me and to move slowly. With her words, she st stuttered that she was up and moving. I grabbed for her hand and she guided us backwards slowly as I kept my eye on that thing, that monster in nightmare. The Bigfoot was still there, breathing and looking like it wanted to pounce on us. Now I know why some folks and even kids go missing in the forest then and today. You know these things are probably one of the causes. I've listened to the f missing 411 things. I know what I know that this has to be true. I know that these things are not chummy either. At least not the not the one we came across. The lonely old trail. I wish that old trail was flatter and kept up at uh, kept up at the time. By the time we reached a bend we'd seen earlier just up ahead before the monster popped out of the forest, we lost sight of it and started moving quicker, but not too quickly as the trail was more of a game trail at the time than anything. Neither of us had been on it before, but we knew of it and where it led, however, back to the campground, in a roundabout way, of course. We were still some way out, and while we lost sight of the Bigfoot, we did not lose the sound of it following us. It was really I was really scared for my wife. I swear that thing was was not liking her one bit for some reason. Maybe it sensed she was a female and it was a female as well. However, I did not and could not tell either way what it was, but a scary looking ape like monster. It could have been female, possibly, as I said, but I could not be sure, and I am not even today. What I did know at the time was that it was starting to pelt us with stuff all of a sudden. It was my wife who got hit first, 
Fortunately, it was a small pine cone, but it was enough to get hers and my attention, and fast. Soon enough, small limbs and even some pebbles started flying our way. Once I was hit right in the back of my head by a pine cone. I was glad it was not a rock. The vocalizations started ramping up as we started to move quicker, too. Huffing, grunting, and even some really strange language could be heard. It was as if we were, it were, in a raised voice, yelling at us in some crazy, deranged way and in a crazy and deranged language. I've heard of people talk. I've heard people talk about this before and totally get it. It is a language I believe to this day. The outhouses. <clears throat> Trees were shaking. Stuff was flying at us from, uh, flying at us from through the thick forest. The screaming and crazy vocalizations were also being hurled at us. At one point, we could see it moving through the trees. It was swift, fast, and seemed like a blur here and there. Once, while looking over briefly to locate it, I swear I saw it grab a branch and swing itself nearly 50 to 15 to 20 feet forward. I was picking up its chat. It was picking up its chatter, and now it seemed to be growling at us too. At one point, I remember also my wife telling me she was not sure if it was that thing that was making all the thudding sounds as it smashed its way through the forest, or if it was her heart pounding away in her chest, she heard. I assured her it was a Bigfoot. Again, it zigged and zagged across the trail behind us. I could see this thing as, uh, was getting, cl uh, getting really upset. It was really beginning to throw stuff and growl even louder, so loud you could feel it. But, as it crossed the last time and growled, my wife yelled at me the words I so badly wanted to hear. The car! It's over there! We sprinted past a couple old outhouses that sat on the edge of the old campground, and I too spotted the car down the little dirt road that we found ourselves on. Safe. We were safe at last. Hiking and Pictures That was a long time ago. And it took us a year, at least a year, to head out to that side of the lake again, but never on that trail. Matter of fact, we kept to the more southwesterly part of the lake and the west side itself most of the time when hiking and taking pictures. Today we still get out in the woods, and over the last couple decades we've come to realize that we are not sure if our lives were ever really in that much danger. However, that thing did not want us there at all, period. Especially my wife. And who knows? I'm no cryptozoologist, as for darn sure. Since then, we've heard a few things in the woods at night, once in a while, camping up near Nez Perce, Perce Na uh, National Forest. It was a scream like how we thought sounded very familiar, so familiar, in fact, we headed into the cabin for the rest of the night. But... We are still out there, when we can, taking pictures and hiking some of the easier trails around Lake Hayden, and without a monster, and without a monster in the woods following us since that day. But that is our encounter story. Thanks, Carrie, and Glenn.